Thanks very much. Right, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Imam. Uh, I'm a research associate at the Data Science Institute at Imperial College. And the project that I'm directly involved with is, is this eTrix project, which you've been hearing about. Some of you actually know it. So um, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, sort of a, a, a platform that we built um, um, as a deliverable for eTrix uh, for the purposes of data harmonization. So just a slide about eTrix project, just to give you an, an idea of what the project is about. So basically, the IMI, which is that initiative for uh, different uh, safety and efficacy uh, projects, research, uh, translation research projects, uh, uh, has almost now, I think I checked the website yesterday, about more than 50 projects already, uh, generating uh, preclinical and clinical data um, for across different data diseases and all these. So and. And I think that the realization within IMI is that all these different projects, they sort of go through the same process of having to aggregate and analyze and, and manage all these data. So might as well just have a service sort of infrastructure that would be common enough to answer many of the, the needs and requirements for these different projects. And that's what Etrix came into, uh, into place. So it is, it is meant to be a service project uh, to provide this common infrastructure and a service for these different IMI projects. Uh, uh, in, an, in a pre-competitive, because we've, I mean, there's, there's pharma and academic institutes, uh, all, all the different partners. Um, so, yeah, as I said, it's a service project, and uh, it is meant to uh, service as many as, um, as possible of, of the all of the AMI initiatives. Right, so that's sort of where we started off with, and, and sort of an early realization, and I think everyone in this room will sort of ag agree to this sort of state that most of the projects are in or they go through. I mean, so you start by having all these different data sources. I mean, the consortium has all this money to spend on different data and they, they generate sort of metabolic profiling, RNA, protein. They, they've got one site that does some clinical data. Another site does the other data for different cohorts. And then somehow at some point, all this data needs to be aggregated. And, and usually it's what we've seen so far is that really it's just up to each and individual project to have these very ad hoc processes to put this data together, has this really geek analyst who's just sitting there receiving all this e different data and, and waiting for them to put it in a way so that they can generate these figures, put it in a paper, publish, and oof, we, we're done. So, and, and, it, and it's such a pity, really, because I mean, there's so much data in there. I'm, I'm sure all of you would agree that that's not really why these, these big projects are started in the first place. So definitely there's something there uh, that is going wrong, and we need to provide a, more like a streamline, a process where this data is aggregated in a, in a, in a more sort of context-aware and a domain-driven uh, uh, manner. And, and that's sort of where we started realizing where these challenges are and how we actually want to, to, to come up from this scenario into a more, more scientifically-driven uh, process. And, and again, so looking at all the different obstacles back then, and I think uh, Again, I'm just sharing with you really where we were and, and what sort of driven us and motivated us um, at the beginning of the project was obviously, so the idea now is that, okay, we always want to go to this data integration part where we can make use of all these nice uh, different uh, data sources. Uh, but then what we were faced with were these silos of curation expertise really, and I'm, I'm actually thinking of Transmart here. So what we always find is that the first thing you have to think about, oh, you got this nice data and you want to load it in Transmart, you have to go to the next part expert who knows transmart formats, who knows the column heading file, someone who knows what's going on. I, I know there's a lot of work now that's being done to mitigate that, uh, but I guess I'm talking about maybe two or three years ago. But, but then again, I mean, the whole idea that the, the, it's, it's sort of the data generators at some point have to give up the data, go to a curator, which know nothing about the data, but they know the tools, and that sort of shift now goes be, sort of creates a gap, really, and, and I think that's, that's where the second point about this is started to focus on the technology versus the biology, because you've, you've lost the connection about people who know the data, why they've generated in the first place, and now you've given it to people who know the tools to try to put it for you in some, in some manner. And, and, and hence, this whole losing the picture was there, and, 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 and when it came to actually bringing this data into, into a, a, a software, it was really difficult to now try to assess and how, how did all this, what was the original plan? Why was this data generated? Why do we have uh, this clinical uh, assessments with these different metabolic profiling? How can we actually just put this all back together? And it becomes really difficult. So, and again, this, this idea of hypothesis driven, again, because the way that we've always driven is that, okay, and I'm thinking about transport again now, when we design the tree, you're always thinking of the, this, this questions in your mind and hence that's how you're designing your tree because that's how you're gonna load it. 
And now we've always faced the same problems like, ah, you have different things now, you're thinking about different ways, so you have to change and redesign your tree and maybe lead order again. So, and I actually, that, I'm actually very um, happy to have actually heard, and everyone heard the keynote today, and, and, and the whole thing was talking about exploration of data. It's, th th I mean, um, Larry, I think his name was, yeah. He, he basically didn't have any hypothesis in his mind. He was just exploring the data, how these things different changed, uh, and, and he's just looking at them. So this idea of exploring the data in a hypothesis-free manner is something definitely that we, a lot of projects also start with because they, do, they, they generate all this data. They're not really exactly sure what they want to see, so they're just like, ah, we'll, we're going to see what happens. So you want to give them tools as well to, see, to let them answer these questions. Um, so with all these things in mind, there's always obviously standards, standards, standards. I mean, there's always the recommendation that we should be using standards. And all the projects that we've had, had sort of, some of them even had mandates to generate the data into, I don't know, C-disk formats or, but then does that go beyond anything rather than just recommendations? So they just, we have, I mean, when we started, we looked at C-disk, for instance, and it was these set of PDFs that we had to sort of read about SDTM and how do we format the data in it. But there was no actual any tooling or any platform that actually put this into practice for us to see how it goes. Um, so, and then sort of as a last step really, and I, and I think that's also one of the motivations uh, that sort of started this work was, again, looking at Transmart, and, uh, and I'm not really challenging it here, but I think we're trying to f place it where it was really, really strong. And I think we looked at it, the, this whole idea of the tree, the concept path, it's really flexible for data analysis, but it's rather rigid for data management. And, and I think all of, we've actually all seen this, that obviously denormalizing everything to become a concept. Of, that's, that's really powerful when you want to just create drag and drop concepts, create cohorts, because you're generating hypotheses. And that's what the whole I2B2 idea was, was from. I think with time, because we've had this for a long time now, and people started using this as a data management tool, we started seeing it like all the sort of down disadvantages of, of, of having to work that. So I think the, the idea was that we, we, we started seeing all of this, trying to compile these whole pro problems, and, 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 and that's what we had in mind when we started to build up the, 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 the framework. So, and, and again, briefly, I, I mean, we've heard about the fair data principles, uh, these, these sort of, uh, I don't know, goals maybe, or, or, or <coughs> dreams that we want to get to when, when it comes to data. And I think we all agree that really metadata is, is, is key really here. I mean, metadata, un unless we actually preserve the data, and, and I think your work is, I mean, this is, this is how we started, re we just want to preserve the metadata because that's how it's going to get you to this whole interoperability and integration. And hence, standards to the rescue. I mean, that's how you start doing that. So standards was sort of our main aim. Let's look at the standards. Let's see what we can do with them. But obviously, we were faced with that dogma. And again, all the projects that we were working with always had these sort of common ideas. You know, it's tedious, it's boring, it's overwhelming, very restrictive uh, and unrewarding. And, 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 and actually, I think the most difficult to deal with when we started talking about projects and trying to, to sell this idea of standards and how we can actually help you with meta standards and all that stuff, for them, the idea of a standard is always about the control terminology or the ontology. Which ontology do I use? Which control dictionary that I use? And that's it. But it doesn't go beyond that actually there's, there's a whole domain that you need to represent in your data. There's, there's a whole metadata on different levels which you could uh, um, uh, preserve that would give you the design of the study, the data set that you generate, the observations that you measure, all these different levels of the metadata, which I, I think until today it's very difficult to try to convey that to. So to, to sort of tie in what the goals were against these challenges, I, I think that's what we tried to to achieve by delivering uh, the, the platform. And re re against this whole idea of, of the style of our creation expertise, we, we said, okay, standards, there are community standards out there, right? So we, we don't want to invent our own. We actually want people to, to start using and adopting these standards already out there. So we want to facilitate the adoption of community standards and sort of bring this curation know-how closer to the data owners rather than them being sort of behind closed uh, doors how about we actually make it more sort of usable, may, may, maybe more friendly, so the actual data generators can actually play with these and eventually learn more about these standards and not having sort of to delegate that to someone else. Um, and obviously this, this idea that we, make, we need to bring in the metadata into our platform, so this domain-aware platform that it's not just a, a concept that is in a tree, but it's actually in order to relate things together. I mean, you have to have that standard at least um, 
uh, that there is a subject which has activities and data sets and visits and all these things, unless you have this common domain awareness of what is a typical translation research uh, project data usually covers, it becomes really difficult to, to, to gain grasp of this big picture. And, I, and obviously the, the idea of this data exploration rather than being hypothesis driven and, and really enlisting the standards in a platform. So moving it out of PDFs and, and just recommendation and documents into something that actually users can use. So that's, that's what we decided to, and I, I think it, you might have already sensed that we actually broke off from Transport a bit. So we, we, we tried to introduce this layer, we said, of data harmonization before, it, before uh, Transmart. I think we, we, we try to place Transmart now into more of the analytics. So data that goes into Transmart has to be harmonized already before it goes in there. And everything that's to do with the data management, the data standard application and the harmonization occurs in, in that layer before it. And then we, because I mean, Transmart doesn't go out of the, of, of the loop. It's just that it is, um, <laughs> instead of just, you know, We've been on board with the general architectures about what Transmart wants to go on, and we all agreed that we don't want to end up with this really monolithic application that does everything, you know. Imagine that you had this Microsoft suite or the Excel and PowerPoint and Word and all done in the same, right, software. It, it doesn't really harm if you have uh, this, this clear um, uh, separation of concerns sort of way that, it, and, and then collectively they are very linked and then you build a, a platform around that. So that's, that's what sort of the e Etrix ecosystem is, um, is, 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 is designed around. So, so yeah, I mean, basically, as that we, I, and again, I guess wanted to stress that we, we're not treading into the sort of data capturing side of the data. So uh, we leave that to all of the, these tools out there. There's so many of them would try to put the standards into how you're capturing your data. But then once, once you sort of captured your data already and now you, you want to move into more of the integration part, that's where the Etrix, uh, the harmonization service platform comes in. So you bring in the data, you stage them, you transform archiving and, and do the, the actual standardization process. Keep it there as the repository of the data so you can always go back to it. I think, again, very similar to maybe what you've done guys here, is that now Transmart doesn't, doesn't become the source of the data. It's actually becomes a consumer of the data and the number of times you can always go back to that standard representation generate the tree that you're interested in, go there, do the work. And if you decide to do another one, just go back and export another one because we always know, I mean, the, the, the sort of unloading and loading of transmart bits. So that sort of placed, places the, the picture. So as, as the, the service itself, uh, I think there's, there's two sort of flavors to it. Obviously, there's the, the metadata framework itself because we looked at what, if we're building that framework, there's, 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 there's already not a sort of a completely integrated uh, uh, framework out there that would serve this purpose. So we tried to put together things. And I, get, and I said, as I said, we didn't want to invent new uh, stuff. We just took, you know, if CDISC is there for clinical stuff, let's get CDISC on board. If ISA tools are there for the, all the omics standard metadata support, then let's bring those on board. And then try to prevent, to provide an implementation for this framework by uh, into this platform uh, that if I got time, I might give a quick demo. So to talk about the platform, um, uh, it's, it's got these sort of three main modules in it. So obviously, we had to build a new data repository, which is sort of that standard compliance uh, 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 data. Um, so it's for storing, exploring, and integrating of the harmonized data. And then around that, there's the different curation modules wh where the metadata lives. So obviously, in this whole process, um, we need to query the different standards, the different templates, terminologies. So this is sort of all within these Etrix uh, curation modules and then workflows obviously for the actual process of curation and export. So my, my skip on those, um, I mean, technologies and uh, for, I mean, it will be the slides if people want and that's sort of a platform deployment plan. Uh, just a quick um, intro about the, the framework now. So the approach really was to try to, and now I'm about the point that I said about control terminologies being the only thing that people usually think about. In fact, actually, we're thinking of three different things. The study design, the data set that you generate, and the observations that the, the contents within. And that's sort of briefly these, these three different layers that, we, that eventually the whole platform is built upon, is that we, we provide contextual metadata, which gives you this whole breadth of what is the domain, what is the whole translational, uh, well, I wouldn't say translation, but the, 
the different elements that usually many of these IMI projects uh, involve. Uh, and then once, once you uh, have this description of the general design and the general entities and elements of your study, obviously the data set is eventually your holder. That's, that's where you, all of the data is, is, is produced. So if you've got these clinical assessments, each of these different clinical assessments produce eventually a data set that is maybe uh, about one particular data. So be it laboratory findings, that's uh, molecular data or vital signs or whatever. Same thing with the assays. Uh, again, it, the, at the end of the day, you generate a data set. So we wanted also to provide this idea of what is the, what is the description? How can you describe these data sets? What are the column headers? And in that case, as I said, we just using we, uh, uh, the, 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 the standards out there. So CDISC SDTM and ISA tab for the omics. Uh, that's how we structure the metadata. And then obviously, once you've got your data structured, then the idea of the contents, what, what's in these columns and on these in rows, needs then the, the context, uh, sort of the control vocabularies and, and labeling them. So if on a more, most granular part, th this, this will be the observation. So if one row is about a headache that's been measured in that subject in I don't know what, then we, we try now to extract all of these observations once, once everything is structured in a nice way. And then that's how, actually, that's how we achieve harmonization, because now everything could be pretty much generalized to that observation model, which we, I mean, I, I don't want to, again, give too much, I mean, I can give the details, but I don't want to bore you with, but it's, again, sort of a very generic way of describing these observations, and once every, the data is described in this very sort of generic, very small uh, um, set of descriptors, it becomes really easy now to, to query all these different observations from different studies and even across different projects. So the way we go about this is basically um, these very, very stepwise. And I think the, 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 the first thing we start with is that we have to structure the data. So we, we start by this syn syntactic harmonization. So we, we force the data to be following these standard templates. Then so once, once the data is in these standard templates, we start going, doing the semantic harmonization where some of these columns are, have to have the restricted dictionary. Then that's, you start applying these dictionaries to, and then that's how you move on to uh, do the integration. And to put this more of a schematic, that's sort of what happens. Um, so as you can see here, you've got your, uh, the project on structured data. The first step is that you need to go through is the structuration, uh, and, and which basically with the help of these different modules, uh, we've, um, we've been involved with the sort of pilot of CDISC to expose these uh, templates via an API, which they call Share API. Um, so th this, th th this would be sort of the input of defining what are the data set templates already out there that will be readily available in the system uh, to map your data into these templates. These templates get loaded into database, then then harmonization process of the contents get achieved, then loaded into this repository of harmonized observations, and that what makes it then available for data exploration and export, which which I showed actually we can, that's where we can export data and build pipelines to export for transport, for instance. Again, following with the idea of the master data tree and, and sort of a, a C-disk driven uh, master design, a master tree design. So um, I've, I, I can do a quick demo or I can just go through slides that show what happens. Depends really on the time. Um, but. I'll, I'll, I'll show you where the, so there's, there's the link sort of, um, I think I can maybe just show you that this, we have a sort of a, a demo site which everyone can, can go to and, and try things out. We have a blog and we, we're planning to have a Docker sort of installation available very soon and then code will, will follow. Uh, so if we just go to that, I prepared like a quick, I was just checking this over this project. Um, Right, so, so if you go there, I mean, if you, if you first sign, you, you basically you create an account, you sign in, you, you create a new project. So first, obviously, the first time you, you log in, you won't, you won't see, find anything, but you, you start by creating a project, um, which s simply just give it, I mean, I'll just give a quick one, uh, let's say, TF test, um, transmart. And let's say just create project. So the idea here is really is that you, you the first thing that you need to start doing is to, uh, to 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 define these different activities and different stuff that you that this project is is going to generate. So let's just look at the 
of these cleaner activities. So let's let's say you, you you're generating obviously it's subject data. Every everything every project has subject data, right? Um, so this this is the idea of having all of these templates uh, loaded into a database and make them available. So these for for now these are all the CDISC SDTMs, for instance, uh, which could be used to map your data against. So let's uh, let's say subject data. There's a demographics. Uh, this template so you pick that one that shows you all of the different sort of variables what each column heading means and what what um, what it covers so when you say add data set that basically brings that adds this um, sorry that adds this um, uh, template to this activity and that becomes sort of a placeholder for all of the subject data that you will load for this particular project and it, it just becomes a matter of including or excluding uh, from this big list of columns what, what are the columns that sort of met that you will be um, uh, uh, using. So we just click Save. Um, obviously, at this stage, we didn't put any data. We're just creating placeholders. So uh, this, this sort of admin side of the project is, is probably expected to be done by some, some project data manager or someone who knows the design of the actual uh, project. Let's just go do another one, let's say, for laboratory data. Right, and for this one, there's, there's one for laboratory. So I said, because I, I sort of know, but I mean, what we expect that with time, I mean, there's, there's, there's information about what each of these domains mean, and hopefully people will start actually understanding what, what these different uh, templates uh, are and start actually using them. So let's say just add data set and just hit save. So, okay, then, then that's sort of the, the, the process. Um, and then the next thing is that you, you actually now start importing your data. Um, so let's just go, so this is the stop for this test, let's just go import, and this is sort of your data stager, where all of your data um, lives before loading, so let's just start, off. we've got this data set, which again, if you go on the blog, um, we've, um, we have, we, you can download this CDISC data set um, sort of uh, test, and these are different files that um, map to different domains, um, vital signs and LB. And as you can probably see, what we're dealing with right now is already see this sized files. Obviously, the, the real life situation is that data is not ready into these standard formats, uh, which we have also worked on a bit of tooling in order to allow the users to do the mappings. Uh, but for now, let's just say that you've got all these data. Um, so you load them, and now it's just a, a matter of loading these files into these uh, in, into the database. So let's say DM is the demographics. You load the file. You start this sort of process. It gives you now these templates that sort of what has been defined previously. So you want to say that this file is the subject data. It should be mapped to this uh, template. It does sort of a quick match, and actually it finds that there are some missing columns here, actually. so. I'm, I don't want to walk you through the whole thing, but basically this thing, you go through template mapping, um, you preview the data, and then you load it to DB. It's, it's quite fast, actually, but, and now actually the files are really small, so it's actually quite uh, quick. But then this, this I'll, I'm just going to show you a, a project that's, um, so we've got this CDISC test, right, um, with all of these different, um, so these, these will be the different uh, elements, medical history, physical assessments, uh, and then uh, in, in the import, um, did I click on the right one? No. Um, yeah. So as you can see, again, it gives you here a way of, of knowing which files are loaded. You can always reload. You can always change the file and reload again and, and, and do these sort of incremental or sort of targeted loads. So once, once you do that, then, then, we, then you can start exploring the data. And I'm just going to show you an example on, on one of the real projects, actually, that we're working with. And, and the idea here is that this, this sort of unified viewer of the data is, again, inspired from the, how the, the data is already uh, standardized. So you've got these three main panels, right? Subject data, clinical observations, and biomarker data. In that particular project, there is no biomarker data loaded. But I just had this tab open. Yeah, so basically it will give you a view of all the different um, um, subject characteristics, clinical observations, and if there are many uh, assays loaded, then you can see how what, what sort of data is loaded. And the idea of this is really um, gives you this, this universal view of the data in a consistent way. So you, uh, whichever projects that you work with, you're always going to see that same thing. 
And this is actually now showing four different studies loaded. So in, originally, these were four different studies from four different sites that had different files. And we actually loaded them against the same templates. And then hence, the viewer makes it now easier to, 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 to see these clinical observations, for instance, from these different four studies. So, and, and in a way, it's, it's all linked together. So let's say, and again, yeah, just one note about how the clinical observations as well. If, if, if anyone's familiar with CDISC, again, the idea of trying to standardize the way you present the data, it, we're following with the same sort of classes, domains. So we, we and I, I, this is always going to be the same way that this domain is always represented. And within each uh, domain, then you start seeing the different observations. Um, so if you, you click on one, you basically see a visual of the distribution. And let's say, uh, Glucose, um, you can see, and again, this whole idea of exploring. So you want to see maybe there's these events um, uh, and, 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 and the distribution of, of other things. And you, and you can see like filtering on one and it can tell you, well, if, if you're only filtering on this, then it tells you right away that this is now down to 117 subjects and these are from these two different studies. Uh, so it's just, it starts to give you a, a sort of a, a view of what, how, how different things might be related. And, and now with these, again, in, in, in SDTM, what we want to try to do is not, not to make it so much, so much C-disk, you know? I mean, the, the idea of having that uh, an event could have these different qualifiers about them. So you can actually see the severity, you can see the occurrence. So in a way, the user doesn't really have to know that these are C-disk uh, columns, but for you, it's just basically different chart values which you can see for that same event. So if you want to filter that only the mild ones or, or only see some bugs in there. Uh, and, and the idea is that then you would move from this sort of, you, you create an int, a, a group of, of, of subjects that are of interest, um, only these guys who have sort of have fallen this range of age, and then you export that into a data set. So that sort of, you go to an export data builder, which uh, you start creating these data sets uh, from. Uh, just quickly show you here. Oh, this is the one, um, export. So the idea that you have my data sets, you just create subsets of the data exports, and this is sort of the point where you can now, off you go, you go to your favorite analytical platform, and, and this is where we actually tie in with, with Transmart. You can generate the tree from the subset of data that you're interested in, load it into Transmart, and then you can start your your process. So I'm, I'm yeah, I think it's it's enough for this. Um, as I said, it's there's, there's a nice, presentation there are some tutorial videos as well so if you want to go you can and we'll be adding more to them so i just wanted to put my acknowledgement slides and um and thank you all for listening <laughs>